Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with a very special collaboration with Kurt from the VSO Gun Channel over in the States, over in Ohio, in America. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I met a girl from Sarajevo and she had told me that as well as using guns on the front line, they'd been using bows because somebody had found out they shoot through sandbags and water butts. I just recounted the story. I, I was about to do a test. I shot a sandbag. Lo and behold, the arrow went through. It was interesting. Well, Kurt from the VSO Gun Channel said, well, you don't do guns over in, in the UK and basically in Europe. So why don't I do the gun bit? You do the bow bit and we'll put a film together. And here we are. So thank you very much, Kurt. You know, it's been great. So far, the collaboration has been brilliant. And I've watched Kurt's footage that he's done of his shooting. So different rounds going from the really small to, you know, significantly big and shooting them at a casual bag of builder's sand. He just went down Lowe's, the, the DIY store equivalent over in the States, bought a bag of play sand, building sand, much the same thing apparently, dumped it on the table, nothing clever, nothing compacted, and he shot it. And the results, well, we're gonna see them, but they're interesting. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So I've got a selection of bows here. Starting at the beginning here, We've got uh, the Azza bow by the mighty Jorg Sprav. So this is a fun little, um, well, lever action thing, really. So it just loads up like that. Shoots lightweight little bolts. So this is the 130 pound, short draw length, tiny little bolts. You can see them here. Well, then we've got the big end of the scale is uh, 155 pound, I think it is, uh, compound crossbow. This is what's known as my lockdown longbow. So there are other trials where I shoot medieval style uh, arrows using this thing. That's not what we're doing today. We will do a medieval st style arrow, but this video is not about that. So we're gonna shoot the regular crossbow bolts for this, which are these ones here. And we're also gonna shoot my medieval longbow arrow versions, which are full length longbow arrows. I'm using them as crossbow bolts. So a lot heavier, a lot slower, a lot more momentum. Then we've got a rather old fashioned compound longbow, 75 pound. So we've got the arrows for that. Uh, it's been a while since I've shot this, so it might be interesting, but I should get one on target in the end. And then we have uh, just a 150 pound regular crossbow. It shoots quite fast, it's a nice bow. Let's see how it does. Obviously nothing compared to the compound bow. And then the wild card in the pack, because we've all got to find out, harpoon gun. If this was a movie, there'd be a harpoon gun involved. Uh, Sarajevo, I guess they probably didn't use harpoon guns, but you know, let's see what it does. So I'm going down the range now with all my various things. I'm going to put the weights up of the bolts uh, as I'm shooting them. I haven't got a speed for it, but you know, this is not that serious for that. Um, if you're desperate, I'll try and find some speed, speeds later on for you. Thanks. Well, we're back at the range now and I've got my assortment of bows here going from the not so powerful through to the very powerful indeed. We're going to shoot them at the bags and we're going to compare this with what Kurt has done over at the VSO Gun Channel. But before we carry on, Obviously this film is really, it's a modern film about modern items. It's not really historical, which is what I usually do. But I have some fantastic websites that sell my historical stuff. And if you want to support this channel, go and check that out. That was a really good way to start. And of course, don't forget the t-shirts. Here goes with the adder. Right, let's have a look. This is the back of the bag here. And this is the adder, the lightest of the bows. Uh, one of the bolts is stuck in the front of the target. The other two have gone clean through 10 inches, 25 centimeters of sand. But here's the thing. I've only found one of the bolts under the target there. That's where it landed. I've just tilted it up so you can see it. So it was basically spent by the time it left the bag. So really that would have done you no harm at all had it actually struck you. But that's the weakest of the bows. Over to you, Kurt, with the point two two. So what we're gonna be doing is shooting 22 first out of a 22 pistol. But this is pretty much the smallest popular caliber that you find in most American homes. Entry wound for the 22. And you guys knew this already, but we've got no exit. Next up, we've got a 75 pound compound longbow. This might take a few shots for me. It's been a long time with one of these. Right. At last. Whew. 
So that was cleaned through. I don't think there's any point going to look at that. But what we can do is judge how deeply it is in the target and get some sort of empathy really for what's going on. Over to you, Kurt, for the nine millimeter. We're gonna move up to nine by 19. This is typically what you think of a popular handgun caliber. So entry wound, nine millimeter. And you guys knew this already, but no exit on the nine by 19. So all you guys out there, they were giving Todd some crap about one sandbag not being enough. Well, so far it's doing halfway decent, but I think we're about to, uh, I think we're about to rip through it. 150 pounder next, shot this earlier. It shoots quite high. Touch high. The unnerving thing is I've got to aim straight at my camera and it does not feel good. Oh. Three. That one we got. Well, that's kind of interesting. Those are all the definite misses I've removed. So we've got from a little bow, one just lying underneath. So that was spent, that was done. That was our uh, compound bow. And that is a hand's breadth clean through the back. So, you know, there's plenty, plenty of energy left in that. These two here are from the 150 pounder. I think that one is the one that went through because it's slightly less in the target than this one. So I'm gonna lose that. But that one is also convincingly in. That would do you harm through a single sandbag of 10 inches. Remembering, looking at Kurt's footage, of course, the 2.2 and the nine millimeter didn't even think about going through the sand. And yet a pretty paltry 150 pound crossbow, that's going clean through with plenty left in there. And back to Kurt for the 5.56. This is in 5.56 NATO. This is what you think of NATO small arms. Most NATO rifles, unless they're in 7.62 NATO, they're probably chambered in this. I also took the liberty of jostling our bag a little bit just to make sure that it didn't have any bullet tracks through it in case I hit one. Five, five, six goes in. I was shooting a little bit low. That gun zero for 50 yards. We're shooting at 25. And I don't know, boys and girls, I don't see an exit wound on that guy. Like I got nothing on that. We're gonna repack this bag and move up again. 150 pound compound crossbow. Should be the most powerful of the lot. So presumably much like the uh, 762. Just a touch high. Yeah, that'll do. And back to Kurt for the short 7.62. So the Soviet era rounds. So we call this guy the White Russian. Full video out on this guy. It's based on a CMMG mutant. And it is a short barreled rifle, by the way. But this one's chambered in 7.62 by 39, which is known to be a little bit better at penetrating barriers than 55 grain 5.56. Here we go. This is the same caliber that an AK-47 would be chambered in. All right, so check it out. Here's our hit. This is where we came out this time, and you can see that we tracked through the whole width of the sand. When we go to our backboard, this is our impact. And you can see that it had just enough energy to tear the cardboard and make that impact on the backboard. The last up of our serious bows is 150 pound compound crossbow. Now I'm using it now with my medieval weight, medieval style, longbow arrows, which I've modified to shoot off a crossbow. I've done a whole series of films under the name Lockdown Longbow. So this isn't one of them, but go check them out. Basically, this shoots the same weight arrow as a 160 pound English longbow would have done in 1400 or something. There's one thing we know about the ingenuity of mankind is when it comes to war, they find what works. And if they were using these bows down at Sarajevo, you can bet somebody sooner or later would have tried it with a heavy arrow. So let's see what happens. Oof. I think that hit the wood. Let's just go a touch higher. That'll do. Sorry, I've just, I've just seen this, so I brought this in. This arrow just struck under the sandbag. It was one of my missed shoots earlier on. It went under the sandbag 
and broke off, as you can tell. Now the head, without the shaft, has carried on and has dug in, and that's where the head of, the, of that bolt went. So that's really, you know, convincingly in target. This is the arrow that we just shot now in the second round. I had some misshoots. So I've got some markings on it. Oh. <clears throat> oh. 18 centimeters through that straw boss. That is impressive. You are not gonna like that if that goes through a single sandbag. 762, it just broke through the cardboard that was on the backstop, tiny dent in the wood. This thing, 18 centimeters through a hard archery target. Over to Kurt for the long 7.62, the NATO version. Time to step up the 7.62 NATO, also known as 308. In fact, I believe that this is actually 308 Winchester ammunition. So here we go. All I can say is what in the actual entry. And I don't see an exit wound on this. I mean, it blew out the bottom of this bag, probably from pressure, but I see nothing here. I'm gonna have to sift through this bag because we don't have anything that is readily apparent on our board over here either. I think that bag turn profile stopped a 308 round, which that's saying something. I, I'm impressed with that. Like if there's a 308 projectile in there, I am very impressed. I really do want to take a look inside this bag, see if we can find any uh, projectiles. We probably won't find the 22 projectile. Sift it like this, a hand at a time, see if I can feel anything. Uh, what is this? Looky there, boys and girls, what is that? I think that's our 308. That is a decent chunk of lead there, so that is definitely a 30 caliber round. Our 9mm projectile recovered. Actually, this thing looks good enough that you might be able to reload it. <laughs> that's cool. Another chunk. I'm going to guess that this is a... 556 five, round it's much smaller and other than that there should only be a 22 round in here and i really don't think that i'm going to find it it's going to be a piece of lead i honestly thought that the, like the 22 and the nine millimeter were going to stop and that the other rounds were just going to sail right through it like i had no preparedness whatsoever to be sifting for rifle bullets through sand one harpoon gun one sandbag no Hollywood actors in sight, but let's see what happens. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, I think we can assume from that, are you in a Hollywood movie with a sandbag wall and a baddie behind it and all you got is a harpoon gun? Weapon of choice, straight through. I've got two sandbags now, same kind of sandbags that Kurt had over at the VSO gun channel. And he got his 7.62 to just about go through one of these, about 10 inches of sand, 250 millimetres, 25 centimetres. I've doubled up now, so I've got around about 18, 20 inches of sand, so heading for about half a metre. I'm going to shorten the distance now just to make my life easier, really, because it's running late in the day. But the Lockdown Longbow Trials, there's another film, we'll put a link to it, where we did distance testing, showed that even out to 100 metres, you don't really lose very much of the velocity. I can't remember what it was, but it's less than 10%. So I'm going to shorten it now to about 10 or 15 metres just to make my life easier. But we're going to see, will it go through two sandbags? Place your bets now, because I've got no idea either. But I can say that Kurt 762 absolutely will not. I nailed it. And there we are, two sandbags. And how much trouble is somebody in on the other end of those two? Now, sorry, this has just got a little bit confusing because I went to pull the arrow, which is the end of that, and it's finally decided to come out from the head. But we handily have our head from earlier, and you can see it just poking through. So you've got 70 centimetres, two and a half inches of arrowhead in this hard straw target. And anybody who's used to these straw targets knows that that is still a hell of a lot of energy left in there to be able to do that. So two sandbags, and this thing is still sailing through and is still causing a lot of mayhem on the other side. Now look at this, I've just pulled it out of target. It's slight curiosity. See anything wrong with that? Look at the wobble on that. They didn't go in that way, they went in straight. So that is the sand that has done that. It's reacting with the sandbag and it's just bending it round a corner. So I don't know what's happening in there, but I was recovering this so that we could try a regular crossbow bolt from that fast bow. I just want to see what it does because I know that the heavyweight ones work. So I want to see what these do. 
because two sandbags didn't stop that at all. Definitely got it. Oh, now, interesting. So what we got? That much sticking out the second sandbag. Other one, and again, oh. Just that into target. Well, that's interesting. The modern crossbow bolts just about penetrated target about a centimeter in. It's gonna hurt. It's not gonna do a lot more than that if it goes through two sandbags and strikes you. The heavyweight medieval style arrows, they're heavier, they've got more momentum, simple as that. It's not medieval magic in this. They really go into that target significantly. Now, as you saw, I ended up shooting two sandbags and the heaviest of my bolts still went through it. And you know, the 7.62 NATO that Kurt shot didn't. So I went back to him and said, well, have you got anything bigger that might make it through two sandbags? He didn't want to go 50 cal, but he did go 4570, which is an old round. This is a pre-First World War American service round, but it is a whopper and it packs a punch. And it's, you know, apparently in gun circles, well known for penetrating things well. So we tried that. Let's see what happens. And that is a 4570. So to give you guys a gander at what this thing looks like, this guy. And I specifically picked this one today because all the bullets that we've shot up to this time are either lead or lead copper mixes which is a standard manufacturing process. This one is an all copper solid, and it is designed to do some hydrostatic stuff, but in my experience with these rounds, they go through things. And because copper's harder than lead, I'm hoping that this is gonna be able to cook through our barrier today. We're gonna to find out. This is a Henry X 4570. Deep breath. <clears throat> Let's go take a look. You can see the hole is much, much larger. <laughs> and, yep, see, there you go, smoke. Uh-oh, what do we got here? We made it through one bag, and we've got a second impact here where it went through. You can see it's kind of going sideways at this point in time. Did it come out the back? Guys and gals, I do not see a hole in the back of that bag, which means that that thing is probably still in there. And our board back here does not indicate any new bullet holes. Two sandbags lead side by side or a double thickness of sandbag wall. It's looking pretty good for defeating of most small arms. I was able to recover the 325 grain copper spun that we shot earlier without much incident. It was laying right there on top, essentially just about lost, but essentially went in a few inches and that's all. Thank you guys for having me on the channel today. I had a great time on this thing. I learned a whole bunch that I didn't think was gonna happen. I thought I knew what was gonna go down and I was mistaken and that's why we do this sort of thing. And I learned a lot, hope that you guys did too and hopefully I have an opportunity to come back on the channel in the future. And as you can see, the 4570 was stopped by the two sandbags and yet my heavy crossbow bolts went sailing on through with enough punch to do some damage on the other side. What does that mean in modern terms? Well, I've got absolutely no idea. It's a meaningless experiment, but it's fun. And it's really indicative to show that there is complete difference between the ballistics of a bullet and the ballistics of an arrow. And the two should never be confused because they behave so clearly very, very differently. Back at base, and I'm gonna compare what I've done and what Kurt's done. But before I do that, don't forget, go visit the web shops. It really does help support this channel. So we started with a tiny, tiny little dart of 130 pound bow. That just about went through the sandbag. Better than any of Kurt's rounds. Then we went on to one of 150 pound bow. That went through and it had, you know, a bit of energy on the other side. Did I expect it? Well, I suppose I did because I've done the test before with the heavy arrows. I didn't know how the light one was gonna fare, the light bolt was gonna fare, but you know, it went through. The arrow off the compound bow, that did surprisingly well as well. Sailed through a sandbag, you know, not bad. Same again off the 150 pound compound bow. But then we delivered this one and this really went through. So this went in, I think it was 18 centimeters through the target and those straw bosses that we use here in the UK, I think sort of a pan European thing, they are tough, right? I don't think you got them in the States, but they are tough. 18 centimeters, so uh, what's that? Seven inches, something like that, through the target. And then I took these and I shot them at two sandbags. And this one again, 
obviously it was slowed down more, but it still went into the depth of the head, which is about two and a half inches, seven centimeters. That is plenty to do you harm because that target is hard. This one, it barely penetrated the back target and one of the bolts got stuck in, in the sandbag. So two sandbags, they're enough to stop modern lightweight arrows, but not the heavyweight ones. So what's going on? Well, we look at Kurt stuff and the energy of this is about the energy of the 2-2 long rifle round he had. That was the smallest one and we don't know how far through the bag it went, but it didn't go very far and it certainly didn't exit, nor did the nine millimeter. Three times the energy, four times the energy of this, something in that order. But this has got about the same momentum as the nine mil. And when it's piercing sand, it's obviously, it's all about momentum. It's about the length so the thing can't tumble. When we're talking about the higher velocity rounds, they spread, they actually increase in size and in cross section area because they open up. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that I know a great deal about gun ballistics, I don't. I don't know a great deal about the arrow ballistics going through sandbags, I'm not sure anybody really does. But it's got to do with momentum and the length of this thing, trying to keep it going in a straight line and stopping it tumbling and stopping it chewing up and spreading the load through a wider cone of sand. And I'm pretty sure that that's what it is, that it just gives you a nice, clean line and all it's doing is it's parting that channel of sand and it's not pushing a massive cone of sand ahead of it which is what a spreading bullet is doing and i'm pretty sure that's it kurt come back to me give me your opinions either way very interesting very interesting in that this will cleanly go through two sandbags that kurt's 762 would barely just exit one sandbag same sand same density same thickness of it both damp sand pretty much the same thing and for all you hollywood producers and directors out there if you have a film where somebody's got a sandbag wall and all they've got is a harpoon gun grab it it works and the last thing i'd like to do now is to thank kurt to the vso gun channel because obviously the firearm side is just not really possible for us europeans but i will ask please keep the politics out of this about gun ownership this is about bullets and arrows and sandbags and what we can learn from that so leave everything else at home, please. But thank you very much, and thank you for watching.